grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning and blessed Advent to you all. We are so pleased and honored that you have welcomed us into your home this morning for worship as we begin this holy season of waiting for Christ to once again come into the world. I have a few announcements this morning as we get started. Uh, first of all, our hanging of the greens will take place this afternoon at 1 o'clock. It will all be taking place outdoors uh, this year. We will be uh, hanging some lights and putting up the manger scene and hanging some garlands. So if you are available to help us out with that, again, we'll gather outside of the church here at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Today is also a fifth Sunday of the month, which means that it is Spare Change Sunday. So if you have a change jar at your house that is uh, filling up, please feel free to either bring your change into the church at some point this week, or you can take it directly to Coin Bank and tell them that it is for the church and they will count it and get it into our account. Uh, just as a reminder, all of those spare change offerings throughout the year go to support a mission at the end of the year. We will be doing a Bible study this evening at 6.30 on Facebook. Uh, so be watching for uh, the notification that the church has gone live at 6.30. This is a little bit different way to do a Bible study, I know. Uh, but discussion will happen in the comments. And if you wish to watch the video that goes along with today's lesson, the link for that and the instructions is on the church website, or you should have gotten it in an email that you got with your church bulletin this week. Our mitten tree is up in the entryway of the church, so if you uh, are able, we ask that you bring in hats, mittens, uh, warm winter gear that will be dispersed to children in need in our community. And while you are here, if you haven't already, there is an at-home Advent kit for every household in the church. If you have already picked yours up, I invite you to get out your little Advent wreath and be prepared to light the candle as we light our Advent candle here in just a moment or two. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what is in those kits later on in the service as well. Uh, there are a few of our families with elementary age students who have not yet picked up their at-home Sunday school kits. Those are available in the church entryway and they are labeled with your family name so that we make sure there's enough for the children in your household in that packet. So please feel free to stop by and pick those up. Also, one last announcement. Our Ad Council and Finance Committee will meet this Thursday evening via Zoom at 7.30. So be watching your email if you are a part of that committee for uh, the agenda and last month's minutes and the Zoom link. Those will be coming uh, within the next couple of days. But that is all I have for announcements this morning. So today, as we begin this new series called Incarnation, as we look at what Christ means to us all, as we prepare to celebrate his birth, uh, we have a theme song that we're going to be doing every week of Advent. Uh, each week we are going to look at some of the different names of Jesus. And so our theme song will be Jesus, name above all names. Would you sing with me? Each week during Advent, we will also have a responsive reading. And with it, there will be a sung response. And so as we go through this today, because we're down to a skeleton crew here in the sanctuary, 
I will be reading both parts of the responsive reading, but I invite you when the, um, when the bold text comes on the screen, I will motion, please join in and read with what you see on the screen. And when it is italicized, that is our sung response. So this is the Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to set the chosen people free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Savior from the house of David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember the holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham. To set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in the Lord's sight all the days of our life. child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And now we have the Breitling family with our Advent candle lighting. As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be a ruler in Israel on my behalf will come out from you. Through the ages, God's people have longed for a righteous ruler who will speed the day when God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. We light the first Advent candle as hopeful citizens of God's kingdom, awaiting the arrival of the Anointed One. Jesus, you are King. Let us sing together, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verse 1. Well, I mentioned those Advent kits earlier. And in there, in those take-home Advent kits, there are some patterns for what are known as chrismans. Chrismans are ornaments that we place on the tree that are representative of Christ. Now, I told you that each week throughout this series, we are going to be looking at some different names for Christ. And today, the ones that we are focusing on are King, 
and a Messiah. And so I have pulled two of the chrismans off of our big tree here in the sanctuary uh, just to show you a little bit. The first symbol that I have is the crown. And of course, this is symbolic of Jesus as our King of Kings. But I also pulled down the lamp, the oil lamp. And this can be symbolic of a few different things. It can be the symbol of Jesus as the light of the world, but we'll talk about that name in a few weeks. But I wanted to remember today the oil of the lamp. Oil was used in special ways throughout ancient Israel. And one of those ways was in the anointing of priests and kings. And so I didn't have a, a specific image for Messiah that I could pull off of the tree. But as we'll talk in our, in our message a little bit later on, Messiah simply means anointed one. And so as I look at this lamp and I'm reminded of the oil, I'm reminded of the oil of anointing that, that uh, symbolizes for us the Messiah. In your take-home Advent kits, there are explanations for all of the symbols as well as patterns for you to make your own chrismans. And I invite you to do that. Whether you are 4, 40, or 80, this is the time to be creative. You can use the patterns that are provided, or if there is a, a symbol that speaks to how you understand Christ, please make a chrisman of your own. We have a tree in the entryway here. I would invite you, put your name on it, bring it and hang it on the tree. Um, for all of us to be able to see and share. And then at the end of our Advent season, those chrismans will be returned to you if they have your name on them. As we move into our time of offering, I hope that you had a chance to see on our announcement slides the different ways in which you can present your tithes and offerings to the church after all, the work of the church does not stop simply because we are meeting virtually. So as we think about our gifts and tithes to the church, to the mission of God's holy church, let us sing together the doxology. Let us pray together as we dedicate our gifts to God. Bless these gifts, O Lord, and help them to bring the transforming love you have given us into ministries of hope and peace in this, our dark world. Amen. We have two scripture readings that I would like to share with you this morning. Uh, one, the first one, you heard a bit of in our Advent candle lighting. This is from the prophet Micah, as the birth of Christ is foretold hundreds of years before the events actually take place. This is from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Thus ends our reading. And our second reading is one that normally we don't read until after Christmas, uh, but this one specifically speaks to the newborn king. 
So hear this from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Listen for the word of God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God for it. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, there's a group of kids out on the playground at recess, and they have decided that they're going to play follow the leader. There's just one hitch. Two of them, Sydney and Parker, have both decided that they want to be the leader, and neither one is going to relent. So instead, they insist that the kids who want to play pick who they want to follow. Both Sydney and Parker stand there with their arms folded across their chest, looking angry and, and a little bit sad if someone chooses to follow the other one, but looking smug if someone joins their line. Situations like that play out on playgrounds all across probably the world. And they seem innocent enough, but situations like that are some of the first times in our lives that we have to pick who it is we're going to follow. But they are far from the last times that we make such a decision. As a nation, we have come through such a time. Every four years, we choose who is going to lead this nation. Every two years, we choose who our leaders in Congress are going to be. We choose at various times who is going to lead our states, our counties, our cities. But if our election cycles tell us anything, it is that our political leaders come and go. And I suppose that either feels like a blessing or a curse, depending on your political affiliation and who is in office. But there is one leader that we have chosen to follow that does not change. He is not a president, nor a congressman, nor the governor. He is our king, our Messiah, our Lord. He is the one that we have chosen to follow for all of our lives, not for a year or four years at a time, but always. And while we call Jesus our king, we know that in his life on earth, he rejected any attempts at the trappings of earthly kingship. He rejected all of the pomp and the ceremony that went along with a traditional monarch. He condemned those in leadership roles who saw themselves as above others, as worthy of more than the poor and the destitute. Jesus was not a king as the world knows kings to be. Rather, the king of kings turns the whole idea on its head. This king does not ask for taxes to be paid, nor does this king expect us to be enslaved to him. This king grants freedom and asks nothing of us but love. This king even laid down his life for ours. Think about that model of leadership. We are so used to leaders demanding things of us, exerting their power over us, but this king came to serve, not to be served. This is truly unlike any other king the world has ever known. But Jesus isn't just king. Jesus is also Messiah. Now, over the last couple of millennia, that word has come to carry a lot of connotation. Our English word Messiah is, is uh, the Americanized version of the Hebrew word for Messiah. It's translated into Greek as Christos or Christ. But no matter how you say it, Messiah, Christos, Christ, it all means anointed one. 
anointing carried very special meaning for the Jews. It indicated that one had been chosen by God and set apart for a holy and a special task. Priests were all anointed, as well as all of the kings of Israel, from Saul through David and Solomon all the way, all the way down. This is a sign of their holy duty from God to lead God's people. This idea of anointing kings carries on to this present day. In England, the kings and queens are still anointed at their coronation. And there's a beautiful depiction of that in the Netflix series, The Crown. I believe it's in season one. It's like episode four or five when Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, is at her coronation. In that scene, we see that the Queen of England is anointed not only on her head so that she leads with wisdom, but on her breast so that she leads with compassion and on her hands so that she le leads with service. Now, of course, Jesus was not anointed in this same way. He was not anointed the same way that even the kings of Israel were anointed. But we do have passages in scripture that depict his very unique anointing. In Luke chapter 7, Jesus is eating at the home of a Pharisee when a woman who scripture calls a known sinner crashes the party, carrying with her an alabaster jar of ointment. She kneels down at Jesus' feet, weeping, her tears washing over his feet, that she then dries his feet with her hair, kissing his feet. And then she takes that ointment and anoints his feet with the oil. Each of the Gospels shows us a story of Jesus being anointed in similar circumstances. In Matthew and Mark, Jesus is anointed on his head. In John and Luke, it is on his feet. But in all four of the Gospels, it is a woman who anoints Jesus. And in three of the four Gospels, that woman is described as a sinner. Even these seemingly little details tell us something about this Messiah, this Christ that we have chosen to follow. He is set apart for a holy task that has been given to him by God. But that is not a position that he lauds above us. Rather, the very ones that society says should be outcast, should be shunned, should be ignored and forgotten, are the very ones to do this anointing. The ones that Jesus himself says we should care for are the ones marking his body with the holy oil. Not the high priest, not the Archbishop of Canterbury, but a prostitute. In a culture that said men and women who were not married or directly related should never touch. Jesus allowed these women to mark his head, to mark his feet in this very important an intimate moment. But you know, this king, this Messiah of ours, just keeps turning our expectations upside down. Just when we expect ceremony and elegance, this king is born in a stable and surrounded, I can only imagine, by the smell of dung, not in a palace surrounded by fanfare. This king comes to us in the midst of our muck and mess, into the stink of our lives, and asks us to follow. This king isn't driven away by the messes we have made or inherited, isn't turned off by what others and even we think or say about ourselves. Jesus knows us fully and intimately, in part because as a person of the Godhead, Jesus was there at our creating, but also because he has literally walked in our shoes. So what does it mean for us 
that this is the king, the Messiah that we have chosen to follow. That this is the Lord that we have chosen to worship. I've told you before that the word Christian literally means little Christ. Little anointed ones. I would invite you today, at some point, if you have olive oil in your kitchen, or even just vegetable oil, or maybe, maybe just hand lotion, at some point today, stand in front of your mirror. Take a little bit of that oil or that lotion and dab it on your head in the, mark, in the shape of a cross, reminding yourselves that we are little Christs, little anointed ones. We have been called. We have been set apart by God for a holy task. As followers of Jesus who, who took on flesh to walk among the people, reaching out to serve the least, the last, and the lost, bringing good news to the poor and the oppressed, we too must take up this role. We must be willing to go out to the outcast, the lonely and the forgotten. We must be willing to serve those that the world scorns. We must preach the good news of liberation from sin and death, of hope for the hopeless, and love for the unlovable, and mercy for all. One of the things that we are reminded of in the incarnation of Christ is the fact that humans are not only the object of God's love and mercy, we are also the vessels of it. God's love and mercy can be incarnate in us today. Let that be how we show fealty to our King, our love for our Messiah, and our devotion to our Lord by living in such a way that incarnation is evident in all that we do and all that we say so that others may see the incarnate Christ in us. May it be so. Amen. Each week during Advent, uh, we are going to be blessed with some special music. Today, we have Camden Breitling sharing with us, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. As we move into our time of prayer today, I have a couple that I want to lift up, um, but hopefully you've had a chance to share some in the comments as well, and we will lift those up. Uh, remember, there is a bit of a delay, so if it's one that I don't have a chance to mention, please read through those comments and, and keep those joys and concerns in your prayers. I want to lift up Jean Norton today. Jean has been in the hospital with COVID-19, and so we just pray for healing for Jean. Um, we also keep Isla in our thoughts and prayers, as we know this is a difficult time for her as well. We have prayers for the family of Tim Keck, 
And I also want to lift up all of those who uh, made the Snow Queen pageant possible um, and all of those who participated in it, including our congregations. Uh, I believe two students, I know Journey Palmer and Savannah Eddy both uh, were Snow Queen uh, contestants. And so we just give thanks to such a wonderful program, but also to all of those who made it possible. And we couldn't be more proud of all of the girls uh, from Miller who participated in that. They are indeed pretty special young women. Oh, it looks like we have another prayer request coming in here. So I uh, I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know that this is a different holiday for many of us. I know we didn't have a chance to get together with our kids or extended family, but I sure give thanks for, um, for Zoom and for FaceTime that made it possible to see our loved ones and to, to keep everyone safe in the process. Um, Ah, the comments that came in were, great job, Camden. We enjoy your talent, and it's so good to hear the organ again. Amen to that. So thank you, Camden, for sharing with us. That is definitely a joy for us today. I would invite you now into a time of silent prayer, and then I will guide us through the remainder of our prayer time. Let us pray. Help us to pay attention to the many ways in which you enrich our lives, O oh God. It has become far too easy for us to focus on the negative. We seem trapped in its spidery strands. But this morning we celebrate the beginning of the season of Advent, the coming of the Holy One. But before we can begin the celebration, we have to acknowledge where we have fallen short. We need to change our attitudes of defiance to visions of cooperation. Lord, be with our families, our friends, and neighbors who suffer from illness, sorrow, alienation, marginalization, abuse, and fear. Bring healing and peace to their lives and their souls. Be with our families, our friends, and neighbors who are experiencing great joy and happiness May their spirits rejoice in all these good moments and in your great gifts. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus as we pray together as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let us sing together.
friends, as we go from this place today, as we go from this time of worshiping our Lord, let us remember that we ourselves bear God's image out into the world. That we are Christians, little Christs, anointed to take God's word of hope and of peace and of joy to a world in need. Let us mark ourselves with that oil and remember that God's love lives in us and through us. Go in peace. Amen.